What's going on guys? My name is Jordan Miller. I oversee the marketing for Envision Community and we have a very special interview for you guys today. On this Zoom call with me is the president of Envision Community, Charles Warner. Charles, how's it going? I'm good, thanks. Very good. Well, I appreciate you doing this interview. Uh, at the time of this recording, it is currently Pride Month all around the world. It is June and we are going to celebrate by doing this little interview. So thank you so much. I'm happy to be here for okay, nice. your request. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna jump right in. Um, one reason why I think this interview is important is because we want people to have a better understanding of the people, the creatives, the, you know, the mechanisms behind Envision Community. We're a team of actual people creating this platform. Um, and so we're kicking things off with the president Mr. Warner, and my first question to you is, is this. You started Envision Community in 2002, so we're approaching two decades. And I would love to know what your experience is like looking back on all this time now that has passed. What's your experience like running Envision Community now versus when you first started it nearly 20 years ago? Oh, wow. That, that, that's a really good question because uh, so many things have changed. I mean, not only has, you know, the internet's changed dramatically. I often joke when people say how long you've been in business, I say, you know, since 2002, which in the internet time is effectively forever. Mm -hmm. in so many words. And, you know, technology's changed, obviously. But I think the biggest thing that's really changed is uh, people's expectation. You know, being on the internet and talking has really been normalized. Uh, back back then, if you were posting on you know, like bulletin boards and message boards, as they were called back then, uh, you know you were probably a little more tech savvy and really into it. Where nowadays, posting your thoughts online because the social media stuff is really commonplace. It's 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 what what you know what people tend to do all day long. Mm -hmm. So we now say you'll hear us. We don't use forums or message boards and things like that anymore. We say community mm -hmm. because that's really what we're trying to build now. It's not about just throw up a forum. It's about, you know, building an online community and really engaging your users in lots of different ways. And that, that's really been a big change and, and adapting what we do, you know, who we are today is unrecognizable to what we were almost, like you said, almost 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One thing that's interesting is that Envision Community started before really this boom of social media that's so prevalent now and yet you've still managed to co-create a product that has stood the test of time so i'm curious what has your mindset been like throughout all these years to stay motivated to want to stay on top of things how have you been able to keep your mind right in order to be able to keep pushing the envelope and being sustainable i i would say actually in a way embrace your nerdiness you know i, I remember I, going to date myself and the company some more is uh, when the iPhone was introduced. And I remember thinking to myself, well, mobile's going to be a thing and we need to start, you know, moving. And, and obviously nowadays everything's mobile first and it, as it should be. But yeah. I remember when, when that was a new concept and, and, you know, recognizing that, you know, it's myself and the rest of our team included, we're all into this sort of thing. So we all ran out and got an iPhone or whatever we had mm -hmm. and, we use our own software, so we're like, we need to make our software good so we can use it. So, you know, I really say, you know, enjoy what you do, embrace it, stay involved, stay engaged, you know, and don't get complacent and, and you know, use your own stuff. Mm. Yeah, I love that idea of not staying complacent because I think a lot of times life is just happening so fast and I can imagine, you know, being a president of a company, there's a lot of moving parts. So what what are some ways that you are able to keep pushing yourself because that's a really difficult emotion to cultivate. Um, what do you do? It is really difficult and, and it, it can be hard at times to, to, you know, when you recognize something needs to change and mm -hmm. you know, sometimes your existing client base may, people don't like change. I mean, mm -hmm. no one likes change. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, you say, we well, really need to change something either in the software and how you do things. And people push back and it might be we change a feature or maybe internally we change the way we do something internally. And, you know, sometimes you have to move forward and sometimes it's irritating at first or, you know, why did you change that? And also sometimes you got to recognize sometimes you're wrong. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might change something, you know, actually, no, it's not better. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's okay to say you're wrong. 
mm-hmm. into, into, into shift gears and stuff like that. So I really find that that's a big thing is to, to, you know, constantly be looking at all those other options and try, try stuff out. I think it doesn't harm, harm yourself to try things. So that's a good point. Uh, in terms of change, have there any been any changes over these years that, that come to mind? Maybe what is some, some of the biggest changes or biggest change that um, either yourself personally have made in your life as president or something that Envision Community has done to make a change to continue to push forward? Has anything come to mind? Yeah, well, there's, there's lots of things, big and small, you know, pushing technology forward and stuff like that. Yeah, I think some of the big things has been really embracing uh, professional communities. Mm. And, and I don't mean big corporate customers, you know, think, you know, but people who are really serious about the community. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a, there's a lot of, you know, people there who like to tinker with stuff, and that's great. But we really try to, to really say, you know, we really want to get people who are, who are serious about the community. You know, whether you're a huge company or a hobby site, that's not matter, but, you know, people who really want to make something of it and really engage people and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that means saying no to stuff. And, and, you know, it's okay to say, yeah, that's not what we're going to focus on because we want to focus over here instead. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's been a challenge over the years, you know, because people bring you good ideas. Yeah, yeah that is a good idea. And sometimes you've got to say, but we have all these other good ideas too. We can't, you can't do them all. So that could be a challenge. Uh, yeah. Um, Okay, so I mentioned that it is Pride Month, and I should probably give a little more context. You are also, along with me, a part of the LGBTQ community. You've been married to your husband for 18 years. Um, I'm curious, have there been any challenges presented to you being the president of Envision Community as a gay man, or has it not played a role at all? Um, Of course, it it plays a role to who you are. Um, I will say I am lucky uh you know and, and it's a privileged one that you know the world we're in now is different than the world it was five years ago 20 years ago stuff like that mm-hmm. but also being an internet company you have a unique position where people don't know you know your your gender your age your race anything about you mm-hmm. um on- online uh particularly you know, almost 20 years ago when we started even even less so Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and that's, that's the thing that that's always kind of been there. And, you know, so I think I'm lucky in that regard. And I recognize some people don't have that, that kind of unique approach to things mm. uh, that, that I've, I've enjoyed. So I would say integrate on the whole, it hasn't really been a big thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, I, and I'm lucky that it hasn't. Mm, interesting. So you kind of touched on how, people can be a little more anonymous um, on the internet and they can get away with saying whatever they want, whether it's in a community or it's in social media, but being part of Envision community and having my own community myself, I can see that there is a little slightly less anonymity, I would imagine, in a community. Um, I'd love to know what your thoughts are on essentially toxicity on the internet regard in regards to social media versus community do you find that envision community is able to kind of separate (laughs) itself from social media in that regard or not so much i think this is really a big question obviously uh and there's a lot of ways you can take this um let me first say you one thing this comes up a lot with our clients when i talk to clients interested in using our platform comparing our approach to like social media and i always say the difference between what we do in social media and social media, it's, it's a soapbox. People sort of project out their, their random thought and people can comment on stuff, but it's not designed for ongoing conversation, ongoing engagement. Our platform is. So I really think what we do mm-hmm. and what social media does, they complement each other. And mm-hmm. I think they're you know, two sides of the same coin, but they have a different purpose. As far as, you know, toxicity go, I mean, that's, a problem always has been a problem yeah. and it's sort of open communication. The difference between social media and what vision community does is you can control the environment mm-hmm. on your own site. And, and I don't mean, with, and, and I don't mean moderation here. Obviously we have moderation tools. You can ban people and edit posts and delete posts and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And that's important. But I really think what's more important is setting your, your, vibe you might say or the, the personality 
of your community. And, mm-hmm. you know, what you put in is what people are going to give back to you. So if you're positive and st- you know, stuff like that in your community, it really helps to you know, create an environment where negative toxic people aren't really going to feel welcome there. Mm. And, and it won't be tolerated. Not only won't, will you not tolerate it, but all your other members of your community are going to say, you know, this is not how we, how we are here. Mm-hmm. And some of the most successful communities I've seen on our platform have really, they don't really moderate a whole lot. Mm-hmm. They just tend to set an expectation and, and encourage a, a positive environment. Do you find that over the years, um, toxicity on the internet has lessened or become worse or better? Like, do you find that over the years, people have become more sensitive and more aware of how people people's words on the internet can affect someone's mental health? Or do you still feel like there's been really just across the board, no progress made? What are your thoughts on that? I think kind of going back, I mentioned this earlier, but I think the big difference has been now everyone it's kind of ubiquitous. Everyone feels, you know, they can share their opinions and share their thoughts. I do think sometimes for better or worse, people forget that there are real people on the other end. Mm. When you press submit, there's Mm -hmm. still real people reading it. Um, And, you know, it can be harmful to people. And, and, you know, and we're fortunate. We we have some communities who use our platform who are focused on mental health or suicide prevention or things like that. And it's, it's, it, you know, while you know, we're talking about toxicity and the negative sides of that, there's positives to it too. Mm-hmm. Where, where people are using these platforms and the power of this communication to really help people. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I would like to hope, and hopefully I'm not being naive about this, but it is become a, a thing lately that people are really talking more about mm-hmm. this negativity. And I would like to hope that people will start to steer communities in a more positive direction, you mm-hmm. know, by by encouraging the positive and, you know, trying to tamp out that negative. Mm. So circling back to, in, you know, in the spirit of, of Pride Month, this might be a little bit of a interesting question to navigate, but I'm curious to know what your thoughts are. Um, do you feel like Envision Community would be a different platform or have a different culture if you weren't necessarily part of the LGBTQ community? Or would you find that things would be um, kind of as is currently. I, that's a, that's an interesting question. I, you know, I don't know. Um, I'd like to think things would be no different, uh, but you, you are who you are and, yeah. and that's part of your personality. Of course, you know, everyone on our team influences everything from the products people uses that we make all the way down to, you know, the stupid jokes we make on our, on our team calls. Mm-hmm. I think, and that influences the culture and that influences, you know, who you are and what you do. So um, I'd like to say, no, it doesn't, but you know, it probably does in reality. Mm, interesting. Um, so, okay. Well, with that said, in what way can you imagine that it, it may affect the, the company in, in assuming in, in a good way? Um, do you think that you're, you know, you being part of the LGBTQ community could potentially inspire maybe another member, um, another gay man who could potentially want to strive to be president of a successful company? Or do you wonder if your presence just hasn't necessarily made that impact yet? Or what are your thoughts on that? I, I, yeah, and I, I'd like to hope so. Um, I, I know in the, my offline world, um, I have hopefully been I try to be a positive influence on people. Um, I've you know talked to people who have businesses, and I you know, give them advice, and, and some are LGBTQ, and um, that's I think been helpful for them to see that you know you can do it, um, and it doesn't have to matter uh, you know, if you don't want to. It's up to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think there are ways that you can you can use your uh, your experience and you know stuff for good and to really encourage people. Uh. Yeah. So before this call, you actually had mentioned to me, you're part of like a police foundation. Um, you do some things offline that I do, I do some things offline. You do have some things <laughs> offline that <laughs> to hopefully inspire others. So I'd love to kind of pick your brain of what that, what is that? What does that look like? What do you want to share with people that they may not know about you in that regard? 
Yeah, like, I do a lot of uh, work with a few different charities in our, in our local city here. I'm actually in our offices uh, as, as, um, here at work today. What city, um, what city, just remind people where you're uh, at? Lynchburg, Lynchburg, Virginia is where, okay. we, where we are. Of course, mo most of our team's remote. Uh, we have a few people here um, and we do meetups now and then, uh, stuff like that. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm on a few local uh, boards and organizations. I do a, there's a theater company I work with. Uh, like you mentioned, there's a police foundation I work with because I think it's important that, you know, talking about diversity and different viewpoints, I think it's important that, you know, like the police organizations have someone who has a different worldview. Mm -hmm. And I think it's been super helpful for me to involve in that. And, you know, I'll sometimes point out stuff uh, that they don't think about. And we're fortunate in our city here that they're very receptive to that. And I think it's been great. Um, so, you know, I really like to, 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 uh, to, to spread that out. And of course, being that once, as soon as they found out, I, I, you know, in part of an internet company, you kind of, for better or worse, people tend to hand off their website to me and say, Hey, can you make my website better? And you know, you're this, it's the nature of the business. I'm sure anyone watching this video who's in the tech industry knows what it's like when, you know, their aunt or cousin or, you know, uh -huh. neighbor down the street wants them to fix their computer. Uh -huh, so. Yeah. Um, so kind of circling to more of an overarching view of Envision community as we kind of round out this interview, um, I'm curious to know what you would consider your biggest accomplishment with Envision Community is. I would say the biggest accomplishment is the fact that we are almost 20 years old and we, you know, we've grown mm -hmm. over that time. We, uh, the, um, what we do is matured. We have thousands of people using our platform from small hobby sites to large enterprises. Uh, I really think, you know, that's kind of our, our, the biggest thing for us is that we're, you know, we're still here, we're stable, we're growing. And I, I'm very proud of the fact that we are you know, able to do that. And, you know, and we have a great team that is, you know, is part of all this. So in regards to reflecting back on these last 20 years, what, what are your, what are your sites like looking forward into the future? How do you, you know, no pun intended envision the the company and where do you see it going you know in five years 10 years 50 years from now what are your thoughts well 50 years from now i i <laughs> probably won't hope no uh i would say in the short term i really expect to see the concept of community continue to mature i've we've seen that a lot and mm -hmm. particularly in the last couple of years that it it really is kind of more holistic approach and we're, we're seeing more and more clients where they're sort of handing off their entire online presence to us. We run what you might call their website, but their whole web presence is a community. Uh -huh. I sort of expect to see more of that where in the old way it was you had your website and then you had your forum. I don't expect that to be anywhere. I think it'll be a much more integrated experience for, for people. Um, of course, mobile will continue to be, be a big deal. And, you know, kind of, uh, you, I think you'll see a lot more business customers using community as a way to engage their clients more directly so they can be more reactive to what the clients want, which of course means more sales and, you know, and, and a bigger, bigger presence for the community. So you, you just kind of answered my question. I was going to ask why, why is community important? I mean, you just mentioned it drives more sales. It's, it creates a connection with the community. Is there anything else that you okay. can think of? <laughs> Oh, for sure. You know, when we have clients who really buy in to community and really understand it, their every facet of their company gets involved. You know, it's their customer support department, obviously, because they answer the customers' questions, but also their marketing department, mm -hmm. because people realize this is free market research. The clients are telling you what they want. Mm -hmm. You don't have to hire a firm to do a big, huge survey. Mm -hmm. Just read your own community, and they'll tell you what you want. Mm -hmm. So that's why I really see is, you know these these businesses realizing. You, you can you can have this experience, this direct experience with your customers, uh, and you own that experience. You know you can do it through Twitter, but Twitter's where you know, things come and go, or Facebook or whatever yeah. that comes and goes on your own site, your own community. This is uh, direct engagement with your customers. Mm. Do you consider yourself successful? And what do you? And if, if yes, what do you consider success? How do you define what that success is for you? I would because, and I would hope other people would say the same thing, that when your hobby becomes your job, mm 
Mm. I would say that's a good mark of success because you enjoy what you do. Mm. And I, I, before we were doing this, you know, I, much like a, a, it's a very similar story. A lot of people, I was, you know, tinkering with programming and web servers and writing scripts and stuff like that, web pages. And I enjoyed it. And then it sort of slowly became my job. And then eventually vision, uh, vision power services came along and, you know, so on. But that's a very similar story to a lot of people. Uh, you know, when we, like, when we interview people for, for jobs here, they'll often say, well, I'm kind of self-taught. I just really enjoy it. And I like to tinker with programs. And I say, you know, that's, that's how I started. That's how a lot of our team started. And I really think that's, you know, talk about success is when, you know, when, when you do what you love and you really enjoy it. Uh, kind of like I said earlier about nerding out, it's fun when you can tinker with new stuff and, and, and then other people enjoy what you're making. And last but not least, um, what do you want people to know about you or what do you want people to know about Envision Community? If, if there's anything that they can walk away from this interview, and if you're watching still at this point, thank you so much, you're amazing. <laughs> and yeah, just what is something that you want someone to, to have seen this interview and they go about their day and they think about this, what, are, what do you want them to take away? I would say the big thing is that we have a great team of people here. I'm happy I'm part of it. I do, I do my part. Uh, and that we really do care about what we do. And I think most important, we enjoy it. I mean, because, uh, yeah, you have your days where you're doing support tickets and, you know, it's not fun. But we also get to see really cool things that our clients make with our platform. And I, I would want people to know that behind the scenes or so answering your tickets or we're, you know, releasing a new version, it's, it's something we really do and care about and enjoy doing. Well, Charles, thank you so much for this chat. It's greatly appreciated. To those who are watching, if you'd like to join Envision community or you have any questions or just wanna give us some props, drop us a line in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Charles, thank you so much. Thank you.